Good morning, everyone. How you guys doing? So glad to see every one of you here and online. Are you ready for the Word of God? You know, we serve a good God, and, and we're, we've started a seven-day fast. And if you've not started with us, um, you could start today. Um, there's still seven days left before Thanksgiving at least. So you, I, there were, I just want to make sure that, that this fast wasn't in the middle of Thanksgiving. You know, so we, we started a little bit early. And also those of us that haven't started, you can still join us this, you know, today for the next seven days. Uh, you know, we're, we're doing a seven-day detox. This is what we're doing. Fasting for seven days. Um, we're, we're not just fasting food until 6 o'clock every day. So we're fasting, no food, until 6 o'clock. And then, and then we're also fasting social media, Facebook, we're, you know, Instagram, YouTube. And we're fasting that for seven days, like for the full seven days. At 6 o'clock, you're still fasting the social media. And you might be asking, well, how did we even start this or how did we even get to this? Well, my daughter ended up getting COVID. She's one of the singers on the team. And, and I went home and I go, you know what, I, be, I better just stay, keep it safe. I stayed home for 14 days. I'm going to quarantine. And in that period of time, I started feeling like, you know, I, I'm not, I started feeling not so good myself. So I, I, I stayed in my room and I told Lisa, you know, you get away too because I don't feel so good. And so Lee, I was in a room for 14 days by myself. So I'm sitting in that room by myself and what I found myself doing was going to YouTube and, and watching some UFC. I love UFC fighting and stuff. And I was kind of looking at that. Then I love cars and, and I look at cars. And, and then I'd walk, watch some political stuff. And, and then I watch some controversial stuff. And, and, and I found myself, this is what I found. I found myself emptier and emptier. And I don't have to prepare any sermons, you know, for this period of time. It's like a, like a real vacation. I mean, I'm just sitting there by myself. So, I, but as I was, watch, I was sitting there looking at the media and the social media, I felt empty. So, and then I go, well, let's just, maybe it's just the, the YouTube stuff's not that good. And it's definitely Facebook is depressing, looking at people's lives and their stories and their drama, super depressing, Right? Have you ever felt depressed after looking at Facebook? Like every time, it's just like that's the way it is. You want to be depressed? Go to Facebook. Go connect right there to the spirit of depression. So, so what I did was the next thing I did, I go, you know, maybe it's not that. So then I turned on, I don't know if you've ever seen this, Me TV. Me TV is Bonanza, Rifleman, Andy Griffith show, old school stuff, black and white Western stuff. And they have like God stories in there. And they talk about, you know, in their store and they're killing someone that always ends up getting shot at the end. You know, but, that, but the idea, the idea is, I go, man, these are so, such wholesome shows. These are great. But they left me empty. And then the Holy Spirit told me, he goes, Marco, none of those things will fill you. They'll leave you empty. Get into my word. And this is what I heard my flesh say. Nah, don't get into the word. Turn on another thing. As soon as I heard my flesh tell me that. How many know you got two voices? And if you, if you tune into your flesh over and over and over, you end up having a fleshly mindset that doesn't receive the things of God. So that means you could be a Christian and lose your worship. You could be a Christian and lose your fire. You could be a Christian and lose your passion for what you should have passion for. And, and this idea, what you're feeding on, junk in, junk out. So I wasn't feeding my spirit. And at that time, I realized, Marco, you got to detox. I just knew I needed a detox. And then the Holy Spirit told me, if you need the detox, don't you think the church needs to detox? I go, you're right. So this is what we're doing. We're disconnecting. You know, the goal of this detox is to disconnect from everything that has disconnected us from God, his presence, his power, his word, and our intimacy with God. And goal number two is to connect with God and his purpose and his presence and prayer and ministry. So you can't connect Unless you're ready to disconnect. Is there anybody ready to disconnect so you could connect again with God and his peace and his power and his love? We need it. 
We need God. You don't need more things. You don't need more entertainment. You and I need God. Can anybody agree with that even online? We need God. So we're going to, we're detoxing and for these next seven days. And if you haven't started, you could actually start today. Um, fast all the way to six o'clock. Start, it'll change your life forever. And this is what we're doing every morning. And you can start, we have day one, day two, day three. There's a devotional that you can pick up on our app. Every morning is like a 10-minute, 15-minute devotional. And also there's a book that we're, we're recommending that you read or listen to. And it's called Holiness by Henry Blackaby. I'll say it again. Holiness by Henry Blackaby. It'll change your life forever. You'll never look at your Christian walk the same. Has there anybody downloaded that book yet? If, you, if you've not downloaded that, let it, downloaded that book, get the full experience of the fast. Say it with me, full experience. Get the full experience of the fast. Fast until 6. Fast on social media. Download the book, Henry Blackaby. Wake up in the morning and do your seven-day devotional. And fill all that social media time with reading scripture, worship, and prayer. You're going to be surprised. You're going to have a whole bunch of extra time. What do I do with this time? Get, come on, de get detoxified. And some of us, we need to break an addiction. Come on, right, someone needs to break an addiction to social media. You know, what I found was, um, I used to, this is what I was doing before the seven-day fast. That's why I need some detox. I would put on a YouTube video, it don't matter what it was, and I would fall asleep in two minutes. Like, boom, boom fall asleep. So, so now I don't have the YouTube video. And I found myself awake like all night the first two nights. Like. So I just realized that I, that was like my like little, I don't know what it was, but it used to put me to sleep. And you know what that means? There was a, there's been an uneasiness in my spirit that, that, and so, so when I got rid of that, I woke up for that first two nights and you know what I did? Word, 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 word. I, there was the first night until I was with the word, reading the word, studying the word, and reading a book until 5 o'clock in the morning. So this is what God is doing. He's getting us right in position. Are you guys getting ready to get into position to hear from God and watch God move in your life? So that's the goal. So now we're going to, today we're going to cover a detox prayer. And I'll start off right now with prayer. And I'm going to tell you about the detox prayer. This is a prayer we should be praying while we are fasting. Let me pray. Father, we just ask you, Lord, right now to move, Father God, in our church. Speak through me today. Speak, Father, to those that are home right now that today we will start. And, Father, those that already started this detox, Father, it will be a time of drawing close to you. And you promised us if we draw close to you, you would draw close to us. So we just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So what is a detox prayer? The detox prayer has two parts. Say it with me, two parts. And we're going to find it in Psalm 51.10. This was a prayer that David, the one that killed Goliath, and you know him, he, he's famous for facing that giant. But he's also famous for a major fall. There was a day that David was supposed to go to war as kings do. And he decided not to go to war and stay home. And in that time, the idle time, have you ever heard the saying, idle time is the devil's workshop? That means when you don't do what you're supposed to do, you most likely will do something you're not supposed to do. So he didn't go to war and he stayed home. And after he stayed home, this is what he did. He began to hang out and look around. He had, his, he, had a, he had a palace, and his palace was over all the homes, and he would look down into the homes. And this was before pornography, but this is what he did. He looked down into a home, and he saw a woman bathing. And while he was, she was bathing, he looked at her. I don't know if he had binoculars or what he did, but he looked down at her, and, and this is what happens. Lust comes through the eyes. Whatever you're looking at, you build desire for and that's why cutting out social media is so important because some of us have desires that have been brewing inside of us and building because you've been looking and opening your eyes and your windows to things you should not be looking at. So David is not only not doing what he's supposed to do, he's now looking at what he shouldn't be looking at. 
He looks at another woman's, another man's wife, and he says, I have to have that. So he tells one of his servants to come up, have her come up to his palace. He sleeps with her and gets her pregnant. After he gets her pregnant, he finds out, obviously, she has a husband. And her husband is at war where David is supposed to be. David is now trying to cover up his sin. Say it with me. David is trying to what? See, either you repent of your sins or you try to cover up your sin. But David goes ahead and tries to cover up his sin. And when you try to cover something that you should be turning from, you go from bad to worse. So David goes ahead. He goes, I got to cover this up. So he brings Uriah, her husband, from the battlefield and brings him home. He, and he says, when he comes home, he'll sleep with his wife and that will cover up the whole mess. And they, I mean, she's pregnant, but who would know if it's me or him? Well, her husband is so loyal to David. You're, this is what he says. How can I go ahead and sleep my wife when everybody's out there in battle? And what he does, he stays outside of his home. He doesn't go in because he feels I should be on the battlefield. I shouldn't be home. So it didn't work. So they came back and they said, uh, David said, what happened? He didn't go back in the house. He stayed outside because he wanted to be loyal to you and the army. He goes, okay, I still got to cover this up. And this was the worst thing David did. David not only slept with the guy's wife, he put a battle plan to kill that guy. And he brought in his major general in. And he says, when you go to war, put him on the front lines. And when you put them on the front lines, leave them right there, right there where the walls of the battle are. And then I want you to just retreat on him. And that's exactly what they did. They went out and they, re, what they do, retreat on him. And he ended up getting killed in the battlefield. And now David is thinking, I got away with it. But you see, just because it doesn't look like there's any repercussions for the wrong you've done does not mean that the consequences aren't coming. Don't mistake God's mercy and kindness and grace thinking I got away with it because no one gets away with anything. Well, David is confronted by a prophet. And the prophet comes up to him and says a little, little story. And he says, what would you do if there was a man that had, you know, thousands of sheep and there was one man that had just one little lamb and that was his, like, it was, it was his pet. I love this little lamb. And what if that, that man that had thousands of sheep went and killed his little lamb instead of taking one from his own herd? And then, and David says, who's that guy? That guy deserves to die. And then the prophet says, that guy is you. You're the guy. And David finally realized his sin was confronted. And then he also realized, whoa, I did evil and God knows about it. So now David prays the detox prayer that I'm praying with you today and I'm going to show you today. This is where David prays, Psalms 51. He says, Create in me a clean heart. Fill, oh God, filled with clean thoughts and right desires. In Psalm 51.10 and the NIRV says, God, create in me, create a pure heart in me. Give me a new spirit that is faithful to you. So what is this detox prayer? Number one, it's a prayer of purification. This is what we're doing. We're giving God permission to purify our lives. And say, God, there's impurities that have entered. And I'm asking you, God, clean me up. Purify my heart. Purify my thoughts. Purify my attitude. 
God, I can't stand staying this way. I need you to do a miracle, not out there. Do a miracle right in here. Change my heart. Make it new again. Purify my motives again. Clean me up, Lord. So it's a prayer of permission for God to begin to go to work on us. See, the purpose of fasting is for us to come out differently than we went in. And David asked for God to purify his heart. Now, if you ask for God to purify your heart, what will God do? What will God do? What if you never pray for God to purify your heart? You know what's going to happen? Your heart will never be purified. So we're asking God, purify my heart. Cleanse me. Now, it, this is what I've seen. When we're, fo- when we're not focused on God purifying us, you know what we end up doing? Trying to purify everybody else. Because we think they're the problem. They have the attitude problem. They're the issue. And God says, stop focusing on the speck in their eye and let's start working on the log in your own eye. Come on. Somebody say, God, purify me. Now, when you give God permission to purify you, this is what's going to happen. Things are going to begin to come up. And when they do, don't cover them up. Say, God, take them out of my life. So in this prayer, we're asking God to create in us a pure heart, a heart that loves God and others and his will above ours. The word create means to transform. It means to cut out. That there's things that need to be cut out of my life. Cut them out. Are you ready for God to start cutting things out of your life so you can have some purity in your life? You're giving them permission. Cut out. Cut down anything that rose above your will. Do a miracle in my heart. Feed me. Produce. Connect me to what I'm supposed to be connected to. And disconnect me from the things I should be dis- disconnected from. Now, purify. It says, create in me a clean heart. The word clean means pure in a, in a physical, chemical, moral sense, unmixed and unpolluted. Right now, there's pollute. We're, you know, we're, we're really interested in our ozone and we want a clean environment. But when was the last time we talked about a clean heart? Because our mindset, our minds, because of what we've exposed ourselves to, has been polluted. That means we're Christians, but we got some dilution in us. We're mixed up with this world. And no wonder we have no power. Because I want you to get lukewarm Christians, compromising Christians, polluted Christians are deluded Christians. And deluded Christians don't come across with potency. And what I mean by that is when we're not potent, we're not giving a full dose of God's presence, a full dose of God's Holy Spirit. And this is what's happening. There's no conviction that comes through our lives. You know what that means? You could talk to your sons. You could talk to your daughters. You could talk to your friends about Jesus And none of them are affected by what you're saying because there's a reason. Because our lives aren't being affected by what God is saying. When our lives are affected by what God is saying and we're walking in purity, this is what's going to happen. There's going to be a pure message that's going to come out of us. An undiluted power of God that when you speak, they're going to listen. Their ears are going to perk and they're going to realize that there's somebody holy. There's somebody godly. There's somebody devoted to God that's standing in front of them and they're going to be convicted of their sin, and it's going to cause repentance. Come on, give God some praise. Let's get our power back. Our power is in our purity. Say with me. Our power is in our purity. And so he's saying clean physically, chemically, in a moral sense. And I was saying thought, unmixed, unpolluted. Some of us cannot, like, really be powerful and passionate with God. And God could use us powerfully because we got too many things in our lives. And, and some of them are chemicals. There's chemicals that we're putting in our bodies. And I'm talking about alcohol. I'm talking about drugs. I'm talking about things that alter your state. All those things end up, this is what they're doing, end up toxifying or poisoning your heart, your spirit, and your purpose, and your relationship with God. How many understand that? So we could get mixed also with bitterness and unforgiveness that someone hurts you and you never forgave them. 
and your heart is polluted by someone that hurts you. Maybe today and maybe in this fast, God is saying, not only fast social media, fast all the hate and the anger and go ahead and forgive somebody so your heart can be purified again so my love can flow. How many believe that we need some detoxification? So only, I want you to get this, only, a, only the pure in heart will see and experience the blessings of God. Any heart that is harboring unclean thoughts and attitudes will not see and experience God. The person remains spiritually blind. They also, because they see life through, a, through the flesh and, not, and they never could see any spiritual good because, because their lenses or their perspective of life has been um, diluted. But look at, this. look at Matthew 5a. It says this, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Who sees God? The pure in heart. That word see means they meet and converse with God. They have a relationship with God. They learn and gain knowledge of God and revelation of God. Um, they receive provision from God, assistance and care from God. Um, when they pray, the requests are answered by God. They're able to experience God. How do they experience God? When they have a pure heart. So without a pure heart, we don't hear from God. You know what that means? No more dreams. No more visions. No prophetic words. No words of knowledge. God's not speaking wisdom to us. Why? Because a pure, only a pure heart will experience God. Without purity of heart, I want you to get this, there is no conversation with God because we're conversing with our pollution. We're conversing with our lusts. We're, per, we're conversing with our pornography. If you're watching, sitting in front of a TV or your, or your phone, a screen, and you're exposing yourself to images of pornography, how can you be communicating with God? When you see a lady pass by, you're not thinking, man, there's another soul that needs Jesus. Your, your images go back to what you open yourself up to. And no longer are you thinking about ministry. You're thinking as women as sex objects. So we got to be very careful of what we're exposing ourselves to. And right now, it's a time for God to say, allow God to say, God, purify us so we can see you, hear you, have conversations with you, and open up our prayer life so we can start walking in the power of God. And not only can I see you, that others can see you in me. Give God one more praise. Come on. When we see God, people see God in us. So I want to just say one more thing about purity of heart. Only a pure heart can sincerely love others and God. Um, the more we obey God, this is what happens. The more we personally purify our hearts. Every time I obey God, obey his word, I'm actually participating in purifying my heart. Every time I hear a word, and disobey God, I'm personally participating in the toxif or toxifying or contaminating my heart. So how I respond to the word of God is going to determine whether my heart's becoming more pure or more contaminated. So that's why when we're hearing the word of here in the house of God, we are not here just to hear the word of God. We are here to get the heart of God, and we are here to hear truth, and then some will say practice it. Now, when you have a pure heart, this is what's going to be the fruit of a, prayer, uh, of a pure heart. The fruit of a pure, pure heart is love. You're able to love God. You're able to love others. When you have a pure heart, you love your church, you love your brothers and sisters, love is flowing out of your heart. When your heart's not pure, you can't love. You can't love God. And that's why when the worship starts, I don't want to worship. I don't like the worship. I just want to get straight to the word. And the reason is our hearts have been contaminated. So we can't worship. We can't love, we can't love our church, we can't love our brothers and sisters, and this is what happens. 
our hearts, the more contaminated it gets, the less love we're able, got less, uh, got less of God's love can flow through our lives. How many want to start walking in love? Look at this scripture here, 1 Peter 1, It says, since you have purified yourselves by obedience. How do we purify ourselves? By obedience to the truth for sincere mutual love. So this is what's happening. I hear the word. I obey the word. I purify my heart for, what's the purpose? For sincere mutual love. And he says, love one another intensely from a pure heart. How do we love one another? From a? So I'll say this. A sinful heart, a selfish heart, a prideful heart, a religious heart, a rejected heart, a hateful heart, an unforgiven heart, a bitter heart, an angry heart, a rebellious heart, a lustful heart, a critical heart, a greedy heart, a worldly heart cannot flow in the love of Christ. Only a pure heart can do that. So any other heart that I have will not flow the love of God. And the love of God is the power of God. Say it with me. The love of God is the so the greater love I walk in, the greater power I'm walking in. So I don't want anything to mess up my love walk. There was something I said, and I just quoted myself on this, and it says this, a disobedient life only develops a unloving character. A disobedient life only develops a what? So this is how the enemy knows. If I could just get the church to disobey this is what I'll stop them from flowing. I'll stop them from flowing in the love of God. And with no love, there's no power. With no love, they are nothing. Right? You guys get that? So the goal is to walk in love. So God purify our hearts. Why do we want our hearts to be purified? One, we want to see God, experience God. Number two, purify our hearts so we can walk in deep love for one another. That's beautiful. So let's talk about what is a detox prayer. Number one, it's a prayer of purification. It's a prayer of what? And number two, it's a prayer of repentance. The importance of beginning a biblical fast with repentance cannot be overstated. Fasting without repentance is just a religious exercise with no power to connect to God, transform our lives, or transform the lives of others. The whole reason that we are fasting is to draw close to God and remove everything that has been an obstacle to us experiencing his love, his power, and abundant life that he offers. So we're, this is what we're saying. God, I want you to remove everything that stops me from connecting to you and your purpose and your power in my life. Transform me. One of the ways that we allow God to transform us is this detox prayer, and it's a prayer of repentance. See, the Lord tells us the way to come back to him is with repentance and even fasting. In Joel 2.12 it says, but even now, says the Lord, repent sincerely and return to me with fasting and weeping and mourning. The scripture is talking about a person that realized I got sin in my life. And God, I'm not just sorry. I abhor it. I hate it. I don't want it in my life anymore. See, you'll never get set free from something that you have not abhorred. You know what that means? Hate it. Repulsive. Repugnant. I hate my sin. And what he's saying, don't just come back to me. Come back to me mourning. Come back to me crying. Come back to me Done with your sin. This is what God is saying. Some of us have not, got, have not been set free because you've really not repented deeply for your sin. You still have, this is what you still have, you still have a pet sin that you keep around once in a while when you need it. And you tell Everybody, you tell your wife, you tell your husband, you tell everybody, I'm done with that sin. But you're done for a season. And how we know we're not done, we go back to it. And the reason we go back to it, because we don't hate it. 
So we need to say, God, I hate my sin so much. I'm asking, no, God, I know you hate my sin because it separates me from you. Give me a heart that hates sin. I'm done with this sin and I don't need it in my life because who the Son sets free is free indeed. Give God some praise. Come on, let's, let's come with mourning and fasting. Now, when we're talking about mourning or with our, for, our, for, our, for our sins, um, we're asking God to develop that in us. Say, God, develop that in me, that I, that I develop a, a hunger for you and a hate for my sin. A big problem that I think we have today is our Christian identity. What I mean by that is you think that you have to participate in sin because you identify with your sinful nature. And you say, well, I'm just a man, and I'm just a woman, I just got desires. But when you're saved and born again, you not only have your flesh, but you have the spirit of God. And the Bible says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What he's saying is, every sin that you're struggling with, this is the truth. You don't have to give into it. Jesus can set you free and you can walk in victory. Maybe today you didn't know it, but you can walk in the power of God's spirit. You can be free from that sin that's been a bondage for you. You can be set free today. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Come on, free us, Lord. And when we're talking about repentance... It takes two turns to get right with God. We turn away from sin, and then we turn to God. Someone say, turn away from sin and what? You can't come to God with just one turn. I just want to turn to you. You can't just turn to God. There has to be the first turn. Turn from sin, and then you could turn to God. Let's look at the scripture, and it says this. Acts 2.38. And Peter replied, each one of you must turn from what? And return to God. And be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of sins. Then you also will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, the power of God coming in your life, you're just a religious person. All you're trying to do is live right without the power to live right. Without the Holy Spirit, you're not even saved or born again. That's why there's people that could come to church their whole lives and still go to hell. And th this is the reason. You got to be careful. The Bible says this, that there's going to be a group of people that say this, Lord, Lord, we cast out demons in your name. We prophesied in your name. And he's going to say to them, depart from me. I never knew you. You worker of iniquity. What he was saying is, you turned once, you never turned twice. You turned to God, you turned to ministry, you turned to works, but you never turned from your sin. And since you never turned from your sins, I never entered you. And you were never born again. Because unless you turn from your sin, you can't receive the Holy Spirit. You know why I'm talking like this? Because we need to get back to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to get back to the word of God. Jesus died for your sins and you cannot turn to him unless you're willing to turn from your sinful life. There's no such thing as a fornicating Christian. You're a fornicator. Amen, come on. It's getting quiet here. It sounds like fornicators in the house that thought they were Christians. <laughs> Because you can't, if you don't turn from your fornication, you can't turn to God. See, this is the idea. We want to water this down so much so we can have a crowd, but no one's getting saved. Do you want to be part of a church that doesn't talk like this? Or do you want to be a part of a church that's just cool? I'm not interested in cool. I'm not trying to be cool. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to win you over with my gifts and my talents. I want to win you over to Jesus Christ. And there's only one way. We got to talk about sin and say you got to turn from it so you can turn to God. Come on, I know it's old school, but it's biblical and it hasn't changed. 
Is that right? There's no such thing as a gangster Christian. I'm a Christian gangster. No, you're a gangster, homie. I mean, we, we want to be like back in the day of Al Capone. You, you want to go kill somebody and come to the priest. Hey, what's up, priest? That's not Christianity. The reason I'm saying all this stuff is because we're so mixed up. If we don't know the word of God, we're going to be jacked up. I'm going to say that there's no such thing as a practicing homosexual Christian. No, there's no such thing. It's all sin. There's no such thing as an adultery Christian. That you're, you're sleeping with another woman and she's not your wife and you call yourself a Christian. There's no, no such thing. Now, understand, oh man, I'm going to go to a church that don't talk about this stuff. You could go wherever you want. The only problem, you're not going to be saved. You're not going to be delivered. You're never going to see God. You're never going to experience the power of the Holy Spirit. And none of your family is going to get saved. Oh, Lord. I'm going to say one last thing. Unless you repent of your sins, I'm going to tell somebody something they've never heard in their lives. God doesn't even hear your prayers. You're completely disconnected from God because God will not reward a life that he does not accept. So don't waste your time praying if you're not repentant of your sin. The only sin God hears from a practicing sinner is forgive me, set me free. I am done with this thing. Renew me. Fill me with your spirit. How many understand that's the only prayer he hears? And this is the last verse. Last verse is right here. Acts 66, 18. Look at this verse. If I had not confessed this sin in my heart, this is David. The Lord would not have listened. If, not, if I have not confessed my sin, the Lord would have not a what? There'd be no connection. There'd be no power. There'd be no interaction. There'd be no exchange. Look at John 9, 31. It says this. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners. But he is ready to hear those who worship him and do his will. See, someone's like theology is all messed up right now. Like, what? I thought I could live however I want and, and pray and God will respond to my prayer. The truth is, if you don't, let your husbands, I'll give you an example of a sin. If you treat your wife with dishonor, disrespect, and you put her down, at that point, God will not hear your prayer. So if it's worth your favor and your connection with God, you could do it all day long. But understand, he goes, I'm not with that. And I can't bless that because I would be endorsing that. And the reason he doesn't, I always say, the reason he doesn't listen to prayer of sinners because he don't want you to get a mixed message. I don't want you to think I'm endorsing your nonsense. Oh, praise the Lord. You can pray, you can pray. Oh, man, put Mac, Pastor Marco back in that room, man. And you'll never be free, I'm talking, free to live for God, free to love God, free to worship God, free to do his will, free to walk in his power until you're free from the bondage of your sin. You think you need your sin? You need your freedom because that sin is taking the place of the joy and the peace and the strength and the power of God. Look at the last verse. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Listen. The Lord's arm is not too weak to save you, nor is his, hear, his ear too deaf to, to hear you call. This is somebody that's praying, and it seems like there's no response. And then he starts saying, well, is God deaf? Is he not hearing me? Has he lost his power? A church, a person that has unrepented sin in their life will not see the power of God flow through their life. The, I would say, the modern church has little power because they have a lot of sin. We're living
living in a time that people need the power of God. They need Christians full of the Holy Spirit. They need to see someone 100% sold out. They need to see the power of God. And when they see the power of God, it will cause them to turn from their sin and experience the power of his healing, the power of his freedom, the power of his joy, the power of his peace. But the power starts in us. Look at verse 2. It's your sins that have cut you off from God. Because of your sins, he has turned away and will not listen anymore. He said, Pastor, that makes sense? Well, it sure does make sense. Because if I'm married to my wife and my wife is going on on me with another guy, and she wants to talk about our next vacation. I said, are you, are you, are, are you stupid? <laughs> you want to talk about vacation and where we're going to go eat dinner? And you're out there sleeping with another guy? When you're ready to repent, maybe I might listen to you. Because right now, I don't want to have to do with you because your sin is in the way of our relationship. And God's saying, now you understand? That's what you're doing to me. Do you know that friendship, friendship with this world makes you an enemy of God? Let's start dusting off these old scriptures that aren't brought up in churches anymore. So we can have a holy, powerful church where God can begin to talk to our kids, talk to the next generation. How many want to see the power of God flow again in your life? Let's all stand up. Praise the Lord. You guys are clapping. That's good. <laughs> we'll see next week if you're, if you're really clapping from the heart. <laughs> but aren't you glad that we're in a church that talks the truth so we can start getting the results of truth? <laughs> you know, I'm going to tell you a dream real quick and I'm done. But we're, we're going to repent right now after this. But I had a dream about COVID. And there was a man in a, he was in like a wa water. And he was in a cylinder in that water, like being separated from everybody else. And I go, God, how can I help him? How can I help him so he could get healed? What's the message I'm supposed to give them? And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me in that dream, very strong. And he says, tell him to repent of his sins. Tell him to repent of his sins. If he repents of his sins, I will heal him. And then that dream, God was showing me that this spirit of COVID that has entered our nation and entered the world has been given access and authority through the power of sin that is ruling. And I will say this, in God's people's lives. We're the key. We're the last defense. We're the help. I'm not saying if you got COVID, it's because you're a massive sinner. I'm just saying what's been allowed into our world, what's been allowed into our families, what's been allowed is because there's been a way for it to come. There's such thing as judgment for sin. It's not just a disease. It's a spirit that wants to conquer. And it's looking for places of, to have authority to destroy. So we're right now, God's waking us up because the church should be a place of healing. The church should be a place of power. The church should be a place where people get connected to the power of God. But you know what's going to have to happen first? We're going to have to disconnect from our sin to connect to our power source again. Come on. 
It's time for demons to run from you. It's, come on, it's time for us to lay hands on the sick and for them to cover. Come on, let's, come on, let's get back our inheritance. Let's get back the Holy Spirit. Let's get back the power. And this is the way, let's, let's repent. So if today you're saying, Pastor, I'm ready to repent of a sin that's kind of been entangling me. I know I have a sin that's been popping up in my life and I'm ready to repent of it. I'm done with it. I want to do the first turn, repent of my sins, and then I'm ready to turn to God to be saved or forgiven or reconnected to the power. I've been living a double life. I've been living a lukewarm life. I've been living a compromised life and I'm done. I'm ready to repent of my sins and do it God's way so I can start getting God's results. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand right now. Just raise your hand if you're saying that's me. I'm ready to repent of my sins. I, I see the hand there. Proud of you, honey. I see the hand there. I see the hand there. I see the hand there. Anybody else? Anybody else? I want you guys to raise your hands. Come up real quick. Come up. We're going to pray with you real quick. Just come up real quick. I see those hands. Come up here. Just come up. We're going to pray real quick. Just real quick. We're going to pray. Okay, we're going to do this. Let's come forward. Come on, let's do this. You, you got an opportunity to come on, repent of your sins. Turn from that so you can turn to God. We need more power. We need the Spirit of God. We want to see God use us. Come on, it's time to give it up. And when you give it up, God will give you the power. He'll give you the Holy Spirit. He'll, you could do it. Proud of you, honey. And church, the Holy Spirit doesn't tell you what you need, what you want to hear. The Holy Spirit tells you what you need to hear. You guys got that? My responsibility is not to tell you what you want to hear. My responsibility is to tell you what you need to hear. Because I love you. I want you to know I love you. I'm not trying to be a hellfire and brimstone preacher. I love you. And, and you know what this is? Is real love because... You've been wondering, what's the problem? Why is there a connection? Why, why am I not getting results? Why am I, do I have no joy? Why don't I have peace? What's going on? And God says, you have, you've not really disconnected. You kind of added me to your mess. But you never were willing to turn from your mess and just follow me. That's what we're doing. Is there anybody here before we pray that's willing to share what you're repenting of? If you are. I want you to raise your hand. I'm willing to share what I'm repenting of. Anybody willing to share with the repent of? Come up here real quick. Yeah, come up here. It's, it's okay. It's okay. You want to come with them? That's fine. That's fine. That's so. What What are you repenting of? Just evil thoughts. Just evil, evil thoughts. thoughts. Wicked thoughts. And um, yeah, I just tired of struggling with my thoughts. I struggle with myself a lot. It, literally, I just okay. I've always felt this, but okay. evil thoughts and that. Okay. Okay, so he's ready. He's identifying thoughts that are saying, you know, these thoughts are dirty. <laughs> I want to get my mind out of the gutter. I'm tired of living like this because it's messing my relationships. It's messing my, my understanding with God. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else want to share real quick what I'm, I'm right now repenting of? Anybody else want to share? Come on, honey, real quick. What are, you, what are you repenting of? And you know why it's important to do this? Because the Bible says, confess your sins to one another. And God is, God, confess your sins. And, and this is what happens when we start confessing our sins. There's something powerful when we're saying, we're done with this thing. You know, for you to come up here and say, I'm done with a lifestyle is, and I'm done with a sin, there's a reason. You, you, that means you mean it. So, honey, what, what are you repenting of? Smoking. I've been smoking. I've been saved, but I've been smoking. Okay. And I don't want to smoke no more, but I can't stop. Well, let's, let's see. Okay, there we go, right? Smoking. We're talking purified in body and chemicals. We said that, right? In the name of Jesus, who the sun sets free is free indeed. The power of tobacco, we break off her body in the name of Jesus. Now in the name of, she'll be purified from addiction to tobacco right now in Jesus' name. She's repented of her sins. She's confessed it in front of everyone. And today is her day of freedom. I thank you, Lord. She is pure. She is ready. She is free.
to speak your word, to do what you've called her to do, Father God, without that addiction, speaking to her and tell her, you know, you're not, you're still bound, you're still bound. She's not bound, she is free in the name of Jesus. Amen. I, I remember I was at, when I was, I had a job at the car dealership, there was a guy that was smoking since he was eight years old. Could have stopped. And he was one of my managers that worked for me. But he saw holiness in me. He saw freedom in me. And he wanted to quit smoking, but he could never do it. So he told me, Marco, can you pray with me that I'd be set free from the addiction to tobacco? I've broken all kinds of addictions. I can't break this one. I go, come on. I'm at my job, so, you know, it's a little different there. I go, let's just go walk to the back and go look at some used cars. And while we're walking, I'm going to be praying with you. And I want you to say what I'm saying. No one's going to know we're praying. You're going to be praying. So I prayed with him. And I began to lead him in a prayer of freedom in faith in Jesus Christ. He went home that day. And he tried to get his cigarettes. He goes, I couldn't smoke them anymore. Since he was eight years old, he was like 40 years old. God broke just a simple prayer of him wanting to be set free. God broke the power of tobacco and he never went back to it again. Come on, give God some praise. We serve a God that's powerful, but he needs some holy people to work through. Let's repent. Church, I love you guys. Let's do this together. And if you're not starting to fast, be crazy. Just go all out. You used to fast for your crack cocaine. Why don't you fast for Jesus? See, guys, some, some people be on a run for days and not eating and come back 30, 40 pounds lighter. Oh, you're on a diet? No, I'm on speed. <laughs> come on. Fast for Jesus. Come on. Come back with the power of God. Come back with freedom. Let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. I thank you, Jesus. For dying on the cross, paying the price for all my sins. Today, I repent. I turn away from my sin life so I can follow you. I am done. Today, you're the Lord of my life. Save me, set me free, and fill me now with your Holy Spirit so I can live for you. I thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give God some praise. If you said that prayer, you meant it. We're going to pray with you. Let's get some information. Get ready this Wednesday night. Tune in. I'm going to be talking. It's going to be a really good service. We're going to do seven-day detox, part three. You don't want to miss it. God bless you. We love you. Remember this. If God's for you, there's no one can come against you. Walk in freedom. Walk in peace. God bless you. Love you guys. Have a great, great afternoon.